Wolverblade is a new beat em up side scrolling game out for the Nintendo Switch this week that takes you on a history trip filled with gameplay reminiscent of classic 2D brawlers like Golden Axe and Streets of Rage. Wolverblade takes place in 120 AD as the Roman army takes over the southern half of Britannia. As the army starts to make their way up north to the rest of the island, our group of three main protagonists consisting of three siblings, Caradonc, Brennus, and Guinevere, decide to challenge this colonization. Each of the siblings, equipped with their own battle stats, quickly jump into brutal gory battle as they fight off the traitors who have joined the Roman army. The game's history-heavy story is told through level introductions and outros with a few in-engine cutscenes throughout certain levels. Both provide context for the battles or the enemies you're about to face in a level. Additionally, artifacts, notes, and letters are scattered and hidden throughout every level, and they provide more in-depth lore for the game both for the fictional cast of characters in the game, but also for the very real history that the game is based on. In these history explanations, Wolverblade ends up feeling like an interactive history book where you read or watch a clip about an area, and then go play a level in said area. Wolverblade takes you back to the gaming days of side-scrolling fighters and introduces its own unique twist in an attempt to create a modern take on the genre. The game has a total of 8 levels that will take you through different terrains across colonization of the Roman army. You play as one of three siblings, Caradoc, Brennus, or Guinevere. Caradoc has an all-around battle stat with decent amount of attack, defense, and speed. His brother Brennus on the other hand is much tougher, having the strongest attack among the three, but also the slowest with a rather weak defense. Lastly, there's Guinevere, who's the swiftest sibling with quick movement and agility, but has some mediocre defense and attack. The main campaign can be played in the traditional normal mode that gives you save states, checkpoints, and continues, or in the more challenging arcade mode that limits you to 3 lives and 3 continues. At the start of the game, you'll choose to play as one of these 3 characters, each with their own unique playstyle based on their battle stats. You can play the main campaign alone or with a friend in local co-op. Wolverblade supports a second player using any form of Switch controller, including a single Joy-Con, and you'll find that it comes in handy when the game quickly becomes a challenge. The battle mechanics and controls for Wolverblade are pretty simple and straightforward. Each hero has their own default weapon that can be used to attack with the press of the Y button. Continuously pressing the button will perform a mini combo of sorts. Pressing the B button lets you jump and you can double press it for a double jump. This move comes in handy when you find yourself having trouble with crowd control and need to get out of a bad situation. You can actually combine the jump button with your standard attack to perform an air slash while pressing downward will activate the heavy downward spike. It's a really useful attack for attacking multiple enemies at once while also covering your blind spots. Running and quickly attacking right after will perform an uppercut slash. This can sort of become a combo in itself if you quickly switch to a standard attack and juggle the enemy while they fall mid-air. It's not all about offense though. Wolverblade gives you a block button to protect yourself from enemy sword slashes and more importantly, projectile attacks from dagger throwing assassins. Double tapping the block button will let you dodge roll allowing you to quickly get behind an enemy or away from an unblockable attack. Pressing the block button with a running start will perform a knockback move, another form of crowd controlling multiple enemies at once. There's a small blue meter underneath your health and that's called rage. This meter is increased every time an enemy is defeated. Additionally, when you knock out an enemy and see stars over their head, you can go for an execution and this earns you a hefty amount of rage. When you fill up the meter, you can activate rage and this will give your character invincibility for a short amount of time, letting you hack and slash your enemies without a care in the world. Once every level, you're given the power to call wolves to come to your aid. It's a good way to get a last minute hit on an enemy or just get out of being jumped on. The last standard attack at your disposal is your special attack. You can think of this as a burst break that pushes enemies away from you. It's pretty useful for getting out of a corner, but it could also take a chip of your life gauge. That covers the basic controls and the standard combat. If that was pretty much all this game had, then it would be incredibly boring and repetitive. But luckily, there is variety in the gameplay through the multiple types of enemies and the environmental interactions. Just about anything that isn't tied down is interactable. Buckets, barrels, people's decapitated heads and limbs can all be picked up and thrown at enemies to hurt them. So yes, you could cut off one person's head and presumably use their head to defeat the rest of the army. Sometimes you'll see enemies carrying large weapons such as long swords or hammers, and these can be picked up and in return let you perform a heavy attack that can combo with your regular attacks. In these moments, the combat becomes extremely satisfying, but only for a short amount of time as the heavy weapons themselves do wear out after a number of swings. Now I did mention that there's a total of 8 levels, and varying on your skill level, they can last you anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour and a half to complete, and that's because the game can get pretty challenging. Each level has a checkpoint, but they're dead center at the level. This means that when you die during a playthrough, you'll respond to the last checkpoint and at the very least have to at least go through half the level again. At first, enemies were pretty bearable, but right after the first level, varieties of enemies start to come at you and quickly pick up the challenge. 
Assassins throw daggers at you, knights will wear armor, and archers have bows and arrows that can shoot you from afar. And these are just some of the enemies you'll face off. If you don't learn how to deal with specific types of enemies accurately, you'll quickly find yourself respawning to the last checkpoint over and over again. This is most apparent when you're fighting a boss at the end of a level. Each boss is unique with their own battle tactic that you'll have to decipher and learn how to tackle. So while the combat and the enemies will definitely give you a challenge, there's still plenty of collectibles hidden for you to find. Those heavy weapons I mentioned earlier have an armory list that lists pretty much every single weapon and it encourages you to try to find them all. Sometimes when you break barrels you'll find a hidden note or a letter that either gives you some background information to the game or the historical context of the location. Furthermore, once you beat a level and return to the world map, you'll see photos and videos taken by the development team during their 5 year research journey for the game's lore and historical accuracy. It truly does feel like an interactive history book and as a history buff myself, I really found it interesting. One really cool feature that's been added to this game that I think a lot of people would appreciate is that it actually has an in-game achievement system. So while Nintendo doesn't have their own universal achievement system, you can still earn them at least within this game. The other game mode outside of the story mode is the arena mode, and you can think of this as a firefight or survival mode for this game. You'll be placed in a confined area with spawning items and objects from time to time as waves upon waves of enemies come at you. These enemy waves get increasingly difficult over time and it easily becomes a challenge after a few minutes. It's a pretty enjoyable challenge and the different maps available in the game mode add some variety to it. Now during the start of my playthrough for the campaign, I felt like the game was going to get pretty repetitive, but as enemies began to change and the challenge started to kick up, I found the gameplay to be more enjoyable, though definitely more demanding than I expected. If you aren't one to get a kick out of difficult games like Cuphead or Dark Souls, then you may not want to get into the gameplay of this game. Additionally, I wasn't a big fan of certain battle mechanics like the executions that earn you some rage. The executions themselves I like, but being vulnerable and open to hits as the animation plays out is quite annoying. Since the execution button is the same button as a regular attack, sometimes I'd activate an execution when I didn't mean to, and other times I'd miss my execution and do a regular attack instead. Game design choices like this made the game sometimes cross the borderline between challenging and frustrating. Especially when those moments cost me my life, making me have to return to my last checkpoint, waiting 20 to 30 seconds just to let the game load again as well. The gameplay is a fun challenge, but some of the kinks in it definitely help blur the line between challenging and frustrating at times. Wolverblade features completely hand-drawn art and it looks fantastic. Characters appear really sharp on the Nintendo Switch display and on TV. This game is gruesome and bloody with decapitation and murder happening left and right. It's certainly going to turn some eyes at friends that look over to see what you're playing on your Switch. The animation style is definitely going to be up to personal preference, you'll either hate the segmented style of animation or love it. Personally, I was really into Scribblenauts that has a similar animation style, so I didn't really mind it too much. What I really enjoyed was the layered art style. In the background you'll see animals and enemies run through the terrain that you'll eventually have to run into. In the foreground you'll see blades of grass move along to the wind and at times, assassins will sneak their way up to the trees above you. It's a really neat touch to the visuals that pop out whether you're playing in dock mode or handheld mode. The audio design on the other hand is a bit of a mix. I really like the sound effects, they feel punchy and satisfying. Slashing through an enemy, throwing them off to a bed of spikes, or throwing a barrel all sound fantastic. The music isn't anything special though. It's not bad, but it's not great either. It's actually sort of short, which is why I think it stood out to me in a negative way. After a few levels, music tracks began to stand out to me and I could sort of point out where the music would reloop to fill out the rest of the level. In a way it sort of came off lazy, but also like the level was much longer than it should have been and it felt like it started to drag on a bit. Wolverblade is a fun and challenging take on classic 2D beat-em-up games. It offers a unique looking art style with its hand-drawn visuals and violent gory animation, though I can see it being a turnoff for some people. The thing that will drive a divide between players wanting to pick up this game or those who want to skip it will be the challenge. If you aren't a fan of challenging games like Cuphead or Dark Souls, then this will most definitely not be the game for you. On the other hand, if you do like challenge, this game definitely has it, but it borders the line of frustration at times. While games like Cuphead have you die constantly, the respawn time is quick and you're back into the action right away. Wolverblade on the other hand chugs the respawn to your last checkpoint and unlike Cuphead, these level sections are long so when you have to replay half a level over and over again, it does start to take a toll on you. Keep in mind this is coming from someone that enjoyed harder difficulty games like Bloodborne and Cuphead. Overall I'd say that Wolverblade is a good attempt at trying to make a modern beat em up game with its own unique twist to the genre, though it could definitely use some refinements. If you're up for the brutal gameplay both visually and in terms of the difficulty, then maybe this game is worth giving a shot. If you're easily turned off by harder games though, then this is definitely not the game for you. 
that does it from a review of Overblade for the Nintendo Switch. This is also coming to PC sometime later this year, and I believe consoles at some point, but for now it's just a Nintendo Switch exclusive. If you do have any questions about the game that I may have missed in this review, feel free to ask me in the comment section down below or just hit me up on Twitter for a faster response. If you enjoy this type of content and my reviews, then consider subscribing. I do reviews on Nintendo Switch, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. And if there are any games in the future that you'd like to see me cover on this channel, let me know ahead of time and I'll do my best to cover those games. As always, thank you all very much for watching, hope you guys have a great day, and keep on gaming.